Hello and welcome to jQuery for Designers. My name is Aaron Sharp and this episode I'm going to look at a request from Gareth Rogers who asked how to recreate uh, this Radio 1 um, effect on the front page of their site. Um, I'm also going to run through this reasonably quickly because I ran through it once already and I completely screwed up the, the whole recording. Uh, the mic wasn't plugged in, the phone went off halfway through um, and it ended up being 45 minutes, which I think is probably too long. So I'm hoping that this one that I record will be uh, under half an hour. Um, but it's the my, my featured um, uh, screencast of the month, so uh, we're going to go into quite a bit of detail to, to recreate this effect. So let's dive straight in. So this is the effect that Gareth was talking about. And it's this mouse over um, changes the tabs but the actual the, the special the neat thing about this is that when I roll off it zooms out and the navigation zooms up which is pretty cool so I'm going to show you how to recreate this effect the first thing to notice is that this is flash so there's no well, stealing their code basically not that we do steal anyone's code but we can certainly learn by looking at code the whole you know view source educate us all um, there is one other effect that this has, and it's kind of like a wipe transition. If I leave it for a second, you'll see what I mean. There you go. Um, I'm not going to do that. I might do that in another screencast. If anyone kind of is interested, let me know in the comments. Um, I've got an idea of how to do it, but I'm not going to uh, try it. I'm just going to keep this, this screencast down to this zoom effect and the tabs. So here I prepared my code. Um, where's the HTML? Here's the HTML. Simple z uh, Simple tab structure, so uh, I've got a div that wraps the whole lot, um, a ul with my links. The only slight difference to my, my what I would call typical um, tab structure is this, this wrapping element. And the reason for that is to create an overflow. Let me show you this straight away. Um, I'll come into the, um, the CSS in a moment, but this is the the page with no JavaScript on it. And if I click on these links, the tabbing works. Okay, there's no JavaScript on this at all. There's nothing particularly clever about it. Um, what's going on is that this panels element, which has hidden overflow, is simply overflowing. So if I change that to scroll, or um, yeah, scroll. you can see we're just scrolling up and down. But the cool thing is that's basically tabbed navigation with uh, with no JavaScript. Um, I didn't mean to write it like that, it just kind of happened and I know it's, it's obvious now that I look at it but it, it I hadn't given it much thought before. I also wanted to show you very quickly if I disable CSS that again this is a typical tab structure. URLs at the top the images here are just background images and this whole background image thing, this is going to be part of the tutorial I'm kind of in two minds as to whether or not background images are the right way of doing this I prefer when Google comes in because the background images are just decoration they're not actually part of the content uh, that I make them background images so that's the argument, if it's part of content it should be an image element if it's not then it, you know, it could be a background image which, I, which is what I've done so I'll quickly show you the styles, the few things to note. I've used M's for all of my heights and widths. A couple of places I use PX for the border, but I try to use M's on everything just because I was playing with M's, I'm experimenting. Um, there's no reason why you can't use PX's or, or whatever you, you prefer to use. Um, and I should also point out this Z index. I've got a Z index of one on this uh, the tabs, which is the which is this navigation element, and that's to get it to sit on top of um, this overflowed element, which it's in in the markup. The UL is actually below, sorry, above the tabs. Right, like I said, I'm going to go into this reasonably quickly. There's a lot of code to go through. Um, and I have marked this tutorial as advanced. 
So let's get on with it. I'm going to make a, um, a plugin and I want to pass in the percentage that the zoom, the, the percentage zoom that the, uh, the, the image of zoom to document dot ready. Sorry, I almost forgot. And I'm going to do 15%. So as distractions go, I've got my cat looking at me through the uh, through the window right now, waiting for me to open the door for him. But I'm I'm doing a screencast for you guys and girls, and I'm not going to go and open the door for him. Um, anyway, right. <laughs> um, since we're a plugin, we're going to return this dot each, and I'm also going to default the uh, percentage if it's not plugged in, so we can reuse this elsewhere. So if Type of percentage is equal to undefined, then percentage is equal to 10. Uh, I could have done if not percentage, but if percentage is actually zero, then that will trigger. So that's what I've done type of. So there's a number of things that we need to achieve in this code. So the first one is um, I what I'm going to do is convert the background images to image elements and that's because that's how I'll make the zoom effect work I'll basically set the CSS to be slightly wider than uh, wider and taller than the image and when we roll over we'll set the the will animate the CSS so that it's the normal height and width of the image giving the impression of zooming out okay step two create the zoom in out function. Step three, the hover slide up down on navigation. And four, which is optional, the hover tab to show panel. Right. Let's get cracking. There's a few things that I need to, to collect in the initialization, so zoom tab equals, so let's get a jQuery instance of this variable. I need to collect the actual tabs, well, I need to collect the tab element. Um, so zoom tab dot find dot tabs. We could make this UL actually. If we're, if we're sticking with the, um, this kind of tab pattern. And I also need the height of the tabs, which I'll be using in this section, and I'll show you why later. I need to collect the panel IDs, and if uh, if you subscribe to jQuery for Designers, you'd seen that last week I showed you map and grep. If you don't, then have a look at jQuery for Designers, and you'll see. Um, this really cool little code snippet and understand why it works. So we're going to collect all the IDs, return this dot hash, get.join, comments are great. In fact, I will show you just in case you haven't seen it. If I log out what this variable is in the console, You can see it's a comma separate list of all the IDs of these divs. Because these links have the uh, the hash one and we're using it to point to that div. And then we'll get a, a jQuery instance of that. Um, and one last thing, I also want to collect all the images in an array so that I can use them in this function down here. So dollar panels dot each. And it's within here we're going to collect uh, grab the background image and convert to image element. So let's get a jQuery instance of this. And bg equals dollar panel dot the CSS background image. 
I need to use a regex to get the actual background. If I show you what comes out in the console log, I've got this URL because that's that's obviously the, the CSS structure for um, background images. I only need this bit because that's what I need to stick in the image. But I need to be wary of um, URL quote x.jpg. And it can be single quotes as well. So my my regex up here dot match is um, going to try and capture that. So URL any number of spaces, then um, brackets, both of which need to be escaped. Then we might find um, quotes any number of times, and then that's the close. And then we want to capture everything in between. So now if we log out the background, it'll be the result of this, this regex. So let's have a look at what that is. So we've got this uh, this array with two elements in it, and with reg regex match, you get the actual string that you're working on, and then your each of the uh, the captures as the the subsequent elements in the array. So just to be extra sure, if bg is not equal to null, and bg dot length, and bg, I think bg dot length is fine bg equals bg not. Oh no, hang on. And bg dot length is greater than one. Is that right? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Superb. Right. So those are the images that we want. We want to create foreground images uh, to replace these background images. Okay. So now we need a blank image in there. I'm going to do uh, image equals new image. Uh, you could write rewrite this as um, image. It's exactly the same. Uh, is there any reason why I don't want to do that? No, I'm just going to do it like that. You guys can do it any way you like. Right, so we've got the image. Now what we need to do is um, one, bind to the load event and capture height and width and prepare some variables. Two, prepend to the panel. Three, set some initial CSS to basically it needs to be position absolute, so we also need the top naught, left naught. I think there's one other thing I'm missing. Oh yeah, set the um, set the source attribute to the BG variable. Cool. Right, so one. Screw it, let's do it down here. Image dot load. Uh, image dot load, pass in the function, we'll deal with that in a second. Prepend to dollar panel, CSS position absolute, so yep. top naught left naught, and then Attribute source BG. Right, let's check that out. Cool. Yeah. Right, so we've still got the background image on the panel, and we've got this image on here, and you should have noticed, or I will point out, that you can't see this H2. So what I'm going to do is before we insert this image, I'm going to wrap the whole uh, contents of this panel in a div that has a higher Z index, and I'm also going to nuke the uh, the background image at the same time. So panel dot CSS background image is none, so that blanks that out. And I'm going to do find everything 
and wrap it with a div style equals position relative z index t. Cool. Okay, so div one, background image is none, so it's gotten rid of that. We've got our image here, which we'll be stretching in a minute. And we've got this wrapper div, which holds our content. Let's just make sure we haven't um, put too much around there. Ah, nope, that's wrong. So we don't actually want to wrap all, we just want to wrap is it wrap all? Yeah, that's better. Right. Yeah, you can't see that. I mean, it should be white, I guess. Color white. Cool. Neato. Right. Um, I'm going to get rid of that. So that's, uh, that's that code done. We need to capture some information in this area. So um, we need to do a bit of math, not much. And uh, I actually need to do a little bit of fiddling because, um, because I'm doing M's. I can't remember if I mentioned or not, but at the top of my style sheet, I've got font size 62.5, which means that one M is 10 pixels. As a result of this, this dot width is actually in pixels, so I need to divide it back out by 10 to get the M's. So this is PX to M's. The, right, um, I need to capture the, the amount that we're going to zoom in by, and that's the width divided by 100 multiplied by the percentage that we pass in. And we'll add these two together. To, um, to stretch the image. Can't spell this morning. I think that's it. So I'm going to create these two CSS um, objects, well, CSS ob objects that have CSS properties in them. Full view and zoom view. And when we zoom in and out, I'm just going to switch these objects in and out uh, in the CSS properties. So height equals h, width equals w, top naught, left naught. Height is equal to, and what do we say? Um, height. Minus, is it height minus? No, height plus. Yes, yeah, so we want to make it bigger. Oh, sorry, that was supposed to be M's. Yeah, so it would have been easier if um, if you guys are doing it in PXs, then it'll probably be a little bit easier. Width. If you're doing a px, it's obviously you don't have to do the divide by ten. You don't need the um, you don't need to specify um, so it defaults to pixels. Uh, top is not. I don't know why I'm passing it in. Left, we need to offset it to the left by half of this width. So uh, offset to minus, and then width divided by two. So the width increase divided by two. Right, and what I'm going to do is store these two objects against the image. This dot data full view dot data zoom view, and then I'm going to set the CSS to the zoomed view. So if I refresh, this CSS will actually hit uh, my image. So let's have a look. Cool. So that's the zoomed in view. That's the zoomed out view. And we're going to animate back and forth between those two. Um, and I just need to, I did say images, yep, yeah, so I need to capture that.
Right, let's just fold this away for a second. Function zoom images. So images, that's why we're capturing them, for each function. So we're looping around each one, and what we're going to do is say if the image is visible, if dollar image is visible, then animate. If it's not visible, we just want to set the CSS. So, so what I'm saying is when we roll in, this image will animate, but all the ones behind the scenes, they will change the CSS so that when we change tab, it'll already be the right height and width. It'll already be zoomed at the right portion. We could let everything animate, but actually that kind of eats up the CPU and makes it feel a bit sluggish, so we're trying to be a bit tactical about which ones we're actually animating. So, image dot stop dot animate. I'll tell you why we stop in a second. And we're going to do image dot data full view. In fact, no, we're not. We're going to pass that in as a parameter. And we're going to pass speed in as a parameter. Yeah, so the reason why we're making this a function is we can call it from different places. And we can pass in the zoom type. So the reason I call stop here is that when the mouse kind of goes in and out lots of times, it doesn't go zooming back and forth loads of times, which just looks absolutely terrible. I think that's all we need to do, but let's add the hover effect now and start calling the zoom images. So tabs dot hover. It's not tabs, is it? We're not hovering over the tabs. We actually want to hover over the whole thing. So zoom, zoom something, zoom tab. And hover takes two functions. So when we hover out, we want to do something else. So when we hover on, we want to zoom the images. And we want to zoom to the full view. And actually, I'm going to create a speed variable so everything runs at the same speed. So here you can see why I'm creating a, a I've created a variable up here because when we zoom out, we want the zoom view. So you see, when we hover on, we do the full view, and it will go through each image animate the one we're in, the, the one that's visible and if we zoom out if we hover off we zoom out so without the actual navigation sliding up and down let's have a look at this working oh yeah cool you see when I change tab it's already zoomed in no sorry not zoomed in the other way around Yeah, cool. I like that. Hopefully, you guys do too. Tabs uh, dot stop again because we're doing an animation. Animate uh, height, and I think we did capture the height. Yeah, so we're going to animate to the initial height of the um, of the tabs, and we're going to make it run at the same speed, which means that the whole effect kind of runs in sync the height to zero here. So let's have a look at this working. Oh, um, yeah. So that kind of doesn't work. So two things. One, when we load, the, uh, the navigation is visible. Two, the navigation kind of goes down there, which is a bit random but easy to fix. So first thing is let's set the tab height to zero. Okay. 
which is okay, not great. We've got it visible down here and it just kind of vanishes, so we're just going to do dot hide. So it initiate, initial, initiates properly. We're just going to add a callback function and just do dollar tabs dot hide. Oh yeah. I like that. And to be honest, you could stop there if you wanted. Because you've got the click, the ability to click and it changes, and it's all good. Um, so stop watching a scenario cast if you just like clicking. If you want the hover, keep watching. So, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to do tabs dot find anchors dot hover and function hover and I'm going to disable uh, the click functionality with the hover so return false if we hover I want to show the panel uh, whose hash is on the link so this is really typical uh, kind of tabbing panels dot hide them all filter this dot hash dot show why have I got hover out ah uh, yes hover out there we go so that's changing um, the reason I had the hover out actually is because for me, I mean, I'm not mad on uh, hovers to change stuff anyway. But what I've done is um, I'm, I'm adding like a hover intent. So what if I kind of just go down like that? Because the mouse goes over it, it triggers a change. So I'm doing this kind of hover intent. Now there is a full plugin for this. Um, just Google it and you can get it. Uh, I'm just kind of making a mini version of it. say after a hundred milliseconds of being over that tab trigger the um, trigger the the panel be shown otherwise clear the timeout uh, so let's refresh this so you can see as a mouse over it's it's not triggering to the f uh, panel four if I sit over for you know a tiny amount of time, it does do the uh, uh, it does show me the different panel. So that's kind of a, a really basic hover intent. Um, there is a fuller plugin that uh, is probably a lot better than this. Um, this is kind of a, a mini donkey way of doing it. And I think that's it. Let's try zooming um, a huge amount, five, uh, fifty percent. Okay. So there we've got pretty uh, over the top effect, but and you can make it really subtle. So it's just you know something that's quite it's pretty too subtle, isn't it? But just have a play. Um, it works fairly well. If you don't want to use um, hashes here, you can change it to to read out a class, or you can use the um, the metadata plugin to read out the the element you wanted to use. I should mention um, the reason why I captured this here is because inside of a set timeout inside of, and inside of set interval uh, this is actually the window object. So if I run my mouse over you can see I did console.log this it's actually the window so <clears throat> that's why I've got I've captured this and then referred to it as l.hash Okay, that's uh, that's everything. If um, if you have any feedback or suggestions or other cool stuff that you've seen, you'd like to to kind of have a look at how to do it in jQuery, then drop a comment on jQuery for designers. And thank you for watching.